Janice? Oh, no. Uh, I like your hat. Thank you. Um, I, I like your uh, bucket. God? You there? Who turned on the light? That's unattractive. I heard that. <laughs> well, and if you get any closer, you'll be able to smell it too. See, we like the same cologne. Too bad dark whiskey isn't in season. Yeah, well, thank you for the loan. You know I don't mind. I think it's funny you're still trying to hide it. Mm. Well, I was advised carefully to take a few shots of that before starting to tackle this mess. You know, when you take a step back, look at what you've created, you realize it's just a load of tripe. Well, it's your mess. Float if it's easier for you. Better keep that stuff to yourself tonight. No worries. It'll be finished shortly. Nice hat. Thank you. It really offsets your big ears. Gee whiz, Rick, you sure know how to make a girl feel pretty. What can I say? You could do something for me. Yeah? Uh, get the lights queued up. My hat. Oh, you might you might need these, won't you? Well, yeah, they uh, they are kind of important for tomorrow. Oh, they look important. <laughs> so, what did you think? Well, um, I don't read a lot of stuff like this. You use big words. It's my style. <laughs> I I think I got what you meant, though. What? What you wanted to say. You did? Uh, what was it? I don't know. Uh, it wasn't too plain. It's okay. I'm not very good at writing them, so yeah, maybe I'll do it over again. Well, it, it sounds like you want to say something. If I did, it's a surprise. Well, don't take that out if you do it over. I wouldn't know where it is. Don't do it over then. Can I read the rest? Well, now, don't you have a job to do? Well, I don't do much, but I like plays. You ever been on the stage? Oh, oh no, no, I, I, I don't belong there. <laughs> oh, but I like watching them. 
Well, we all need an audience. Are you playing this? Oh, uh, no, it'll, um, it'll be printed in the, uh, program. Oh, well, what's it say? Well, to tell a story means translating thoughts so many people can understand it. Words can mean everything or nothing. They're fickle, but the images last. How's that? Okay, that much I get. Now, I want to tell a story with pictures. Well, why don't you just go ahead and say that? Okay, well, you might have something there. I just like big words, though. Well, keep it if you want. We'll see you tomorrow, okay? What's your story about? No more comedy. We don't have a percussion for it. Rick, would you bring the house lights up? I want to run through this curtain speech one time. To work with such a man is a journey. And tonight we present to you the end of a journey, which is a trick in itself. As proprietor, I beg your willingness to indulge your senses and escape reality for just a little while. Bear with us. We have no budget. Damn it, Rick! Get with it already! <laughs> oh, well. Expecting catastrophe, are we? Yippers! These scribbles are damn hard to read. Well, then why don't you tell us about something you do know? Yep, you know, if you, um, talk about something you know, you know, if you, if you look a little intelligent, maybe the audience will buy it. <laughs> Where are our puppets? Waiting for the cock to crow. A little direction would be nice. I'm not directing you, dearie. Your place is off the stage. Good. My ass, that seat. See how easy that is? It's give and take. I give, and he takes. I give him bleeding ulcers and he takes it like a masochist. Uh, ahem. A champ. How about you give the curtain speech then? All right. Lights, Rick! Lights, Rick! Well, that's wrong, but I like it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Lawrence Welk. Please check your local listings for next week's programming. <laughs> I'm sorry. You got me in the mood. The curtain the speech, Mr. Director. Okay, okay, there must first be a curtain. Is this what we're reduced to? Polyester and... Twilight. I'm a man of many hats. Some call that talent. Some call it hiding behind a costume or a 
change, a metamorphosis, a mask, maybe. I just wear a different hat for every individual I meet. I change hats as befits my mood. For every person, there is a different hat. And for every hat, a different mood and a different scene. Many years of my young life have been collected into this story, worked very hard on it. I've also collected many hats. What was that? That was a curtain speech. That was it? Yeah. Thought I'd be unconventional. Well, it was at that. Oh, good. I don't like formality much. But it doesn't fit. Why, 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 why did you say that? To set the scene. In a hat store? No, it's to set the mood. Our sponsors have nothing to do with hats. Get off the hats. You get off the hats! And get on topic for a minute! Well, what would you like to discuss? Okay. Tell me. One sentence. Why hats? It's in the subtext. Let me see that. That's the introduction to the play. That's what the notes are for in the front of the program. But it was my only copy. God knows you'll have a whole new script by the time we open. Or five new drafts. Here, a little tape and some creativity might help. I'm supposed to be your voice of reason. You do know what's supposed to be said, yes? Well, yeah, but... When I think of a curtain speech, I, I really, I want the audience to know what's going through my head when I write the damned thing. Yeah, I, I, a little explanation. Yeah, I thought I said that already. You don't have to explain if it's in the script. Okay, but it'll go way over their heads. I mean, I like James Joyce a lot, like the portrait of the artist. I of love it. Of course you would. Fine. And all as fine as fine can be, but... You're going over their heads. Okay, so, me explaining things. Liner notes, next. Well, what do you want? Your point, simple. It's identity. Okay, your own. Yes, and that of every other damned person in this room. A curtain speech is all formality. And you give me an artist statement. I don't make up the damn rules. You're a creative guy. Just tell the story. It will tell itself. You know, with just a little more light, Rick, you might actually be able to blind me from seeing our hundred-headed enemy. Line. The exits are to the right and to the left. And they will get your ass out of the theater. Any and all attempts to exit through the orchestra pit will be deferred by the proper authorities. With that said, there will be a ten minute intermission wherein you can have free range in the lounge. Uh, now, with that said, free range is a little dangerous. Be a sweetie and wipe the CT. And there we have a show. It was a tough delivery. But it's over, anyhow. Anybody ever tell you you're bloodthirsty? Often. <laughs> oh, good. Then, salivate on. Salivate on this, then. You're serious. I am so serious. It's the definitive version, the final draft. Here, you grab it. I thought as much. 
it's just as I thought. You know, if you hold on to one script for a while, we might get something done. Insatiable, are we? No, sir, only practical. Again. And I'm sure it won't be the last. Well, then you shouldn't be sure of anything. Now, what we have here is the real meat of what I was trying to get. Now, look, I, I know I've been through a lot of drafts. I've put you guys through a lot. But this is final. This is prize-worthy. Fine. Give it here. Be gentle with this one. It's my baby. You don't know how many of these he's aborted. Final is a dirty word for you. How do I know you're not going to pop out another one? One word. Last page. End. Followed by two words. First page. Add rise. Can, can I look at the other one? You know, we are not the first to be in this bind, nor are we the last. We must merely find a creative way to deal with it. <sighs> there is a god. Sorry I'm late. I had to get my face together. That pun is about as bad as your timing. Okay, where's part two of you? I don't know. Oh boy. I like you in that light. Hey Rick, tomorrow night, let's cut it. This is out, okay? Um, off book, dear. I don't remember this. Well then you are in no worse shape than the rest of us, are you? When did you get your copy? Tuesday. Oh, that's old hat. Here. Here we go. There's nothing here. Well, there would be if somebody hadn't ripped pages out earlier. What's the change? Give me the mask. little thing I like to call uniformity. Eh, voila. All right, you know what? Not asking for much. I want to things. I want two actors. Two. I want them both wearing masks. And when they talk to each other, they don't look at each other. You know why? Because this whole thing is about a failure to communicate. And that's been the entirety of this production. Oh.
hear that. That. That is silence. That's the most beautiful thing in the world. That silence. I wish I could control that. Because the most beautiful thing about that silence, something you can't control, is what's not there. How much are we paying you? I'm not human to you, am I? Sorry? I'm a prop, right? You're the man behind the curtain. I'm your prop. But you're not behind the curtain. You're in front of it. Rick's pulling all the strings. Those idiots are hee-hawing at everything you say. You're the show. I'm your prop. But tomorrow night, I won't be here. You will be. Fine. Then what's this? Your person? This isn't a person. It doesn't have any eyes. But your eyes. They make no difference. You can't see them. It, it's in the script. What script? That thing? I've memorized five of those for you. If I do speak, people hear your words and wonder where they're coming from. And these aren't eyes, they're holes. There's got to be a body to fit the mask. Then build one of those two. Looks like you could use a drink. No, that's all you. What I can use is a break. Can't you let me breathe without you for a few moments? No, because you're my actor. And I need actors to get through this thing. I'm only asking for a few minutes. Five, maybe. Not five seconds, dearie. There were guts in that glare. You know, I have to see a lot of glares and I've never been stopped by one before, not like that. It really said, you bastard, I hate you for what you've put me through. I have to hear that a lot, but I never have to see it. Your eyes. Your eyes are very, very wonderful. They tell horrible truths, those eyes. Let me have the mask. That's mine. No talking. There. That. 
that should not be hidden. If that's another one of your sick analogies, you can stop now. I get it. No, you don't, because there's nothing to get. It's my prop. It was until just now. You can do without. You've changed everything else over and over. Can't I just keep this as a memento? No. <laughs> Why? So you can see my eyes? Yes. You don't need to see them. I'm already mouthing your words. This isn't that hard. No, but it's out of character. Not for you. No, this is totally like you. I am not changing anything else for you, this project, or anyone. This is mine to hide behind when it hits the fan. You have a hat. I'll trade you my hat. If I could just let loose that gaze on an audience. No! I'm not your prop, damn it! Be fair. I've respected you. Are you really that dense, or are you playing me again? No, I'm just that selfish. Please, give me the mask. Why? So you can hide behind it? Yes. Well, easy enough. At least you quit lying for a moment. Thank you. But you're the showman. That doesn't make any sense. What am I when you become the puppet? I... free of me, I'd think. But you don't think, you bungle. And what are you left with? No doubt you break this or find something sick to do with it. I'd like to keep something out of your hands, something you can't touch. It really adds something fresh to your old ideas anyway. Well, keep my script. Which version? Any version. Rewrite it yourself. They'll be trashed the moment they clean up the theater. When the show's over, the words are forgotten somewhere back of the dressing room. I'm just asking for this one thing. Then why are you pegging? That's disgusting. Maestro, you're supposed to direct, not beg. Tell me. All right. Give me the mask. Magic word. God damn it, give me the fucking mask. How's that for magic? That was weak. Really weak. I'm sorry I had to hear it. Here's a little literary critique. Your story lacks subtlety, your dialogue is blatant, and your symbolism is uninspired. This thing is just paper. Which? Both. That will wilt long before we close. Your pile goes without saying. Then why say it? Because I'm making a point. Okay, um, that's what I've been trying to do since we got here. Uh, and I'm the director and I'm imparting this to you and I, I would hope that you would convey it as an actor because that's what actors are supposed to do. Then direct me. That's what directors are supposed to do. We could sit here all day talking about this, or you could throw what you've got to the wind and hope to God something wonderful comes of it. Then it's my issue. I can't do anything so long as it, you're clutching it to yourself. It needs more work. You saw what happened in there. And you know what happened. <laughs> yeah. Well, all good artists lie, dear. So lie to me. Okay. Puppet, speaker, chorus. Bear stage. The chorus surrounds the speaker 
and the puppet, and they're all trying to dress the puppet and tell it what to do and move it and the dollhouse and all of that. It doesn't sound very original, does it? How do you represent them all? You know, maybe they're, uh, maybe they're part of myself. Uh, or just, they wear masks. <laughs> Go on, but commit to one. Both, narratively speaking. The chorus mocks the speaker. And he is not deaf. He hears them, but he's, he's very dumb. How dumb? Tongue-tied, mostly. Chorus laughs at him, but uh, he's got it coming. It's his own damned fault. He speaks the truth, you know, but it's his, it's his own version of the truth, and the chorus doesn't understand, and they have this interchange, but they don't understand each other, and so at one point the speaker tries to join them, and that, uh, that doesn't work out. He uh, finds even then he can't relate to them. And the puppet? And the puppet? I'm gonna leave the puppet hanging just barely off the ground so its feet can't touch it and so, you know, it can't run away with the chorus. That's the best idea you've had all day. Yeah. I'd like to know what to do with it, though. Well, it's ego-driven. Cast yourself. You can't seem to get off the stage. Cast yourself and play all the parts. Or have Rick make the chorus noises. They can be shadows. What about the puppets? Make the dialogue a monologue. Oh no. No, 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 no. Now you're here, you are in this, and we are going to use you. You are going to behave and read what I've written for you. Then direct me, please. Okay. But, um, <clears throat> you will need your mask. Fine. So long as you remember that I'm just the prop, therein's my responsibility. Get back to me when you know what you want me to do. You may have penciled me in as a puppet, but I'm only as good as the puppeteer. I'm not the little wooden boy. This is your story, isn't it? Always. But there's an end to it. No, it never ends. Oh, smile a little. You look nicer when you smile. And if you were a little more organized, there wouldn't be such a mess. You know, if you weren't here to clean it up, I'd be a mess. <laughs> you coming back? You bet. Well, I'll be here pulling for you. Thanks. I like your hat. 
Thanks. It's to cover up my big, uh, ears.